Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and today we're going to talk about 3D Face Me components. So I know when you hear, if, if you've been around SketchUp for a while, you hear Face Me component and you think of 2D geometry. Things like my man Niraj over here, or sometimes you put in trees that are Face Me components just to keep the poly count down in your, in your model. Um, things like that things where there's complex geometry that you look good from one side and just having that always face the camera. That's kind of the intention of face me components. Uh, but I've came, come up with a couple of use cases where putting a 3D component in and making it face me is helpful too. So let's, let's hop in and talk about one of those examples. All right, so just to recap, this is important to understand exactly not, not, we're not going to go deep into this, but how face me components work. So we know that as we spin around in 3D space, Niraj here is always going to be watching. He's going to be staring at me, facing me no matter what. This is because Niraj is a face me component. If I go to my components list over here and I select Niraj from the list, and I go to edit, you can see always face camera is turned on. Just to clarify with 100% certainty what that means, if I double click into Niraj, I can see here, here's my blue axis going straight up, and you'll see the red axis is running the direction of his feet. A face me component will pivot around the blue axis so that the red axis is always perpendicular to the camera. So that means you're basically always standing on the green axis looking right at the red axis of the component, not the, not the world origin or axis. This is inside the component. That's how a face me component works. So it's always his red is right here at his feet. Red is always facing towards us and it's always going to spin around the blue axis. I think we did a video a while ago where we, we played with those axes in a face me just to see what crazy stuff would happen. But if you want more information on creating a 2D face me component, we have several videos on creating your own face me component like this and just how that works inside of uh, using components. So check those out on our YouTube channel. What we're going to talk about today is this setup I got over here. So I got this thing, I got this little hill, I got a tree, I got this fence, and what I wanna do is I wanna come up with a really cool view where I'm looking through these posts right here and I'm looking at the tree. Now this tree is a very cool tree, Dallas from 3D Warehouse. It's a cool looking tree, it's not symmetrical, you see that? So it's got this, it's got curves, it's got attitude, it's got sway, uh, and it's not the same from every side. So it's, what side you look at this definitely changes how you see the tree. I want to look at it so it's something like like this, like this side over here. Okay, so I want to get that curve of the trunk. I want to be able to see the three main branches. If I come over too far this way, these two branches kind of splur together. If I come around too far on this side, then I lose the curve of the trunk. So I think something like this is pretty good. Now what I could do, I could grab it. I could use rotate to try to spin it. So it's, you know, about facing down here. I could create a scene down here, which is the, the view I think I want to see this tree from. And I could jump back and forth between rotate and then examining it from the scene. That could work. That could absolutely happen. That could look great. You know, it could, you could make something out of that. What I might happen is as I turn it though, I might find, oh, you know what? Actually, I kind of like it better if I look at it from over here more. But now I got to update my scene to this view and then go start rotating again to try to get it facing this direction. So this made me start to think, well, is there something I can do with face me? And I do believe there is. So what I have to do is first, like I said, establish what's the view I want. And I think it's something like this. So I get the curve and I get the three branches. I'm going to double click to open this. Now, what I want to do is I want to make this new face me component. But the first thing I have to do is align the red axes to the red axis, excuse me, to this view. So to do that, this is going to feel not very scientific or official right here, but bear with me for just a second. I'm going to draw a line across the bottom of the screen. And by bottom of the screen, I just mean literally parallel to this gray bar on my screen right here. So it doesn't, we're not looking for perfect, but you know, pretty close to right and straight, the straight line there is good. All right, so something like that. Looks pretty good. And I'm gonna draw a line up. I'm gonna come over here, draw another line up, and make a rectangle. Now, I don't have to make a rectangle this. A line would actually work, but a rectangle is a little easier because it's it's uh, you know there's there's some geometry to grab onto. So I like you doing it this way. I'm gonna go ahead and make it a group. 
And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this as sort of a handle for aligning the axes. So if I look at the axes right now, the axes, the, the red is coming out the side here, green's going this way, blue's going straight up and down. It's basically aligning the same direction to the world axes, but the point, the origin is right here in the center of the trunk. So same direction as what I got out here. If I come out here, green and red run the same direction you can see. Oh no, actually it's, it's rotated 90 degrees, my mistake. But similar orientation, just rotated. What I wanna do is I wanna tell it to align the axes to this plane. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this plane, this rectangle I put inside of a group, and I grab it by the middle of that bottom line, and I'm gonna drop that on the origin. Now, I'm going to go to Tools, and I'm gonna grab my axes, and I'm gonna put my axes in so that the red line runs the direction of this plane. So the first thing I always put in, you see they're spinning right there, is my red line. So my red line is gonna go here, and then if I want my green line to just naturally be at 90 degrees, I can just click that same point again. That assumes the blue is going to go up and the green is going to go perpendicular to red. Okay, that looks good. So I'm going to go ahead and click out of here. And when I click out of the component, it comes up and says, would you like to update the component axes to match your modified axes? Yes, that is very important. That's what I'm doing here. So if I double click back in here again, I can see my new axes and I left the plane here just for a second so I can verify, okay, I'm running parallel to it. That means when I look at this, when it's a face me, it would be the same as coming in here and say, orient, or I'm sorry, align view to this plane. That is the view I will get of the tree. At this point, I don't need this plane anymore. I can delete it. One last step I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna come into my components list. I'm gonna go find my tree, which is called some tree. That's really some tree. I didn't make that. That's just how it downloaded. And I'm going to turn on always face camera. And as soon as I do that, boom, did you see that jump? So this is now, as I spin around, always facing me at that angle. So as I spin, it's, it's, it's hard to get an exact perfect spin because I'm going up and down and that sort of thing, but it's facing me with that same curve. So this means what I can do now, I can come down here and get into my, where, where do I want to put my camera? I move my camera around. Yeah, actually, because the way that tree falls, coming over here a little bit more actually works a little better. I get the view I want. And then to lock it in so this isn't going to move anymore, I can just click on this tree again. I can come over. Actually, I don't even click on the tree. I can just go into my components window with some tree and say, don't always face camera. That means it's, now it's not going to spin anymore. Now it's going to go wherever it has to go to stay in that orientation. So we just used always face camera just long enough to get that tree oriented in a way that was gonna be just perfect for the view we were trying to create. And then we turned it off to get that specific view locked in. So this, like I said, this was just something that as I was playing around in SketchUp, I, oh, look at my gates. Um, this was just kind of a cool thing that I came across, but I would love to hear if you guys can think of something. Is there a specific model you're thinking of where you went in and you had to rotate the model and then kind of align the view to the model instead of aligning the model to the view? Uh, I would love to hear if you think that this method is something that could be helpful for you. Leave that in the comment. Go ahead and click on like if you like this video too. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. We create several videos each and every week and you'll be notified of all of them if you subscribe. Most importantly, though, like I just asked, leave us a comment. Let me know what you think of this technique, if there's a way that this could work its way into your toolbox. And let me know if you have some other ideas that you think would make good skill builders. We like making these videos a lot. We like them even more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.